minutes as rapporteur. Thank you very much, President. And perhaps I could start by endorsing your welcome to those uh, very important visitors. Um, Mr. President, Vice President Frattini, State Secretary Altmaier, colleagues, um, before I turn to my prepared remarks, and I'll try not to take 10 minutes, I'm sure all to your uh, fervent relief, um, I, I'm afraid I just wish to start on a slightly negative note, which is that this is billed as a joint debate on cross-border cooperation combating terrorism and crime. And indeed up there it just says it's a debate about terrorism. Um, and uh, State Secretary Altmaier in his introduction, I think, said we were going to talk about three cross-border policing projects. Well, the major part of what I want to speak about is the regulation on setting up the visa information system, which is a border management system. It is not principally designed, its principal purpose is not about combating terrorism and crime. And I'm sorry, but I do take severe objection to the labelling of this debate because I think sloppy thinking like this is what leads us into the idea that you set up a border control or immigration control database. Let's remember that 99.9% .9 of visitors to the European Union are legitimate travellers who don't have any connection with criminality whatsoever and indeed even illegal immigra immigrants or unauthorised entrants. It's not itself a criminal offence to be unauthorised on a territory. So I'm sorry to take up rather a lot of time making that point. Anyway, uh, we're two and a half years since the Commission made its uh, proposals on the visa information system and we've had nearly a year and a half of often intense negotiations. So I am very pleased indeed that we have reached a strong and balanced agreement on these two highly complex legislative proposals, a regulation and a decision. And I would like to thank the German Presidency, in particular Interior Minister uh, Wolfgang Schäuble, but also Mr. Altmaier, for their strong political commitment uh, to these dossiers, um, as well as previous presidencies, in particular the Finnish Presidency, which also worked hard towards an agreement. Um, in my long list of thanks, I also want to extend those to the Commission, in particular Vice President Frattini, who was very hands-on in accompanying us throughout the process and in facilitating the final agreement. But I also uh, know that this uh, result wouldn't have been possible without the support of all the shadow rapporteurs, uh, Mr. Cashman, Mrs. Clampt, Mrs. Kaufman and Mrs. Zanocca, Zanocca, to whom I want to express my gratitude. And finally, my list, my warm thanks to the staff of the Parliament who put a huge amount of work in and were invaluable. Um, and my own assistant, Alexandra, deserves special thanks. She's been absolutely superb. But I'd like to make an important institutional point. We dealt here with two proposals, one in co-decision and the other in consultation. But in reality, we did manage to treat them as a package. So we did get quasi-co-decision on the third pillar measure as well. Uh, the, the agreement shows that the Parliament is a valid partner in co-decision on highly complex justice and home affairs matters. It also shows that the separation between the first and the third pillars is simply inefficient and absurd. Involving the European Parliament on an equal footing in deciding legislation in police and judicial cooperation in criminal matters cannot, cannot but increase the legitimacy of the measures decided in this area. So I would take this opportunity to urge leaders gathered for the summit on the 21st of June to agree on lifting national vetoes in this area as a general rule. Turning to the content of our agreement, I think we've managed to achieve what were my goals from the beginning, to have a system with clear purposes, rules and responsibilities, one which represents uh, firstly and foremost a significant contribution to secure and well-managed borders. But it will also deliver real facilitation for lawful travellers who are the majority of those issued with Schengen visas, as well as an improvement in internal security. The Parliament has introduced much more clarity and rigour into the VIS, limiting the risk of abuse or malfunction and giving citizens the right to receive redress for, mis for mistakes. I'm confident the system we've built will deliver both proper security and respect for people's rights and civil liberties. 
Many other improvements have been introduced in terms of data protection and data security, fallback procedures for the use of biometrics, strengthened rules on access, use and transfer, and monitoring powers for data protection authorities. One new element represents, I think, a very positive achievement by the Parliament and should be seen as a precedent. It concerns access by law enforcement authorities to the VIS database. After quite difficult negotiations, member states did recognise that the VIS is not primarily a law enforcement tool and that there, therefore any access by police or intelligence services cannot be direct on tap access but must be indirect and supervised through filtering by central access points. These will check the legitimacy of each request, though since the Parliament is just as concerned as Member States to have adequate tools to, to tackle crime and terrorism, we have agreed on an urgency procedure for emergencies of request first, justify later, which will cover exceptional cases of imminent threats. The VIS will become the largest biometric database in the world, with details of around 20 million applicants uh, at any one time holding 70 million sets of fingerprints. Biometrics can enhance but also invade privacy, and the same rigour that has been applied to the VIS has to be applied to building safeguards for other existing or future biometric systems. This is even more important when it comes to possible future interoperability or even interlinkage, which could put privacy severely uh, at risk as uh, uh, data protection authorities, including the UK Information Commissioner Richard Thomas, has said. So we must make sure as legislators that we do our best to maximise the benefits and minimise the risks of the new technologies. Co-decision means co-responsibility, and therefore an important part of the project will be implementation, monitoring and evaluation. Parliament must be kept fully informed on the testing of the system, which I hope will be positive and allow the smooth coming into operation of the system. In EU legislation, we've, we are rather too fond of putting in review clauses that remain a dead letter. This must not happen with the VIS. I'd like to finish by highlighting two other important issues. The Council has committed itself through two political declarations to come up soon with a satisfactory agreement on two crucial pieces of legislation. They are, these are firstly the framework decision on data protection that we're talking a lot about this evening uh, to bring proper rules for exchanging the security related data including that which police will get through accessing the VIS and the other one is the so-called return directive it is unnecessary to say why these instruments are so important for Europe and its citizens and I would just urge the council to keep to its political commitments thank you <laughs>